Welcome to episode 3 of Game Dev. In this episode, we're just going to be going a bit over the file structure here, just a little bit, and then we're going to be getting straight into WebGL and drawing to a canvas immediately. So you'll see this structure here. All we really need to worry about is the stuff inside this web directory. We will take a look at the pubspec.yml file later on when we're actually building our application publicly, uh, but for now, we just need to worry about what's in here. So you'll see we have a main.dart file. Now this is going to be the main file that you input your code to. It's the back-end processor of your of your application. And this index.html file is the main view file, the main render file. So this is going to have everything that we see. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all we really need. Uh, styles, this is the main style sheet for our application here. It opened in Sublime for some reason. So this is what we have for the main styles. You can alter that if you want, change it to what you want. It's just basic CSS. Uh, first off though, I'm going to take these scripts here and stick them into the header. I don't really know why they stick them in the body. It's kind of ugly code to do that. So we're just going to move them. Uh, and we're also going to create, get rid of this output file here. If you take a look at the application, we just run it for now. You'll see that this output variable has nothing in it. And then Dart goes and sets your Dart app is running into it. You'll see right here, Dart app is running. That just does it from the main file here. So it's super simple, super easy code to read. So we're going to start right now. We're going to create our canvas. You do that by just typing canvas. We're going to give it an ID of game. Okay. That's that. And we'll go over here. We'll get rid of this because we don't need it. We'll get rid of these comments. Did I get rid of this one? Oh. It's kind of ugly and they don't really tell us anything useful. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create our first class here. So how you do that is you just type class and then the, the name of the class. In this class we're just going to call game. And this game is something we're going to instantiate in the main method which runs. So this game object is gonna, just going to contain all the basic logic for the game. And then we can reference other class files from that. Uh, we will also need a constructor in here. What the constructor does is it's the thing that is run immediately whenever this object is created anywhere. So creating it right here, this will immediately call this method right here, and anything in this method will run immediately. We're going to need an import for this because we are using WebGL. So we're going to import dart colon web underscore GL, and we're going to import it as GL. Now we're doing this so that we have a static context in which we can reference uh, anywhere in this code. So in, down here we could put gl dot and then you'll see a bunch of stuff come up from this object. And so we're going to be using that quite a bit. So this is just a kind of convenience thing to do. Uh, now we need some variables because we're going to be referencing the canvas variable a lot right here. So we should probably create one for that. We're going to say canvas element canvas. We're just going to create it locally inside the game so that it's only referenced in here for now. We'll also need a gl rendering context. So we're going to say gl.rendering context gl. Now what this is, is this rendering context is going to be the way in which we render to this canvas. So it's different for each browser, everything, they kind of, they implement the same uh, backends sort of, but it is different, so we do need to actually define it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually set those variables in here. So we're going to say canvas is equal to query selector, and then game. Okay. Uh, we're using a hash code here because we used an ID instead of a class. So this is a, a single use thing. So there's only one game inside this, this whole thing that we're referencing right here. Uh, query selector will just query an element and it'll bring back the element and the element that we're getting is a candid element. So now we actually need to set the GL rendering context. So we're going to say GL is equal to canvas.getContext and webGL. It's as simple as that. Uh, sometimes, however, that GL rendering context could be null if they're using a, a browser that doesn't support HTML5, doesn't support WebGL, that's, that's a possibility. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to say GL is equal to canvas.getContext, it's going to be experimental.web-webgl, okay? So that I'll get it on Mozilla and some other browsers. Uh, however, it still could be null, so we want to actually send some error messages to the uh, user. So what we're going to say is we're going to say query selector. Uh, we're gonna use, and we're gonna set the attribute of this. We're gonna say style display all. Okay, and let's go create that right now. So I'm just gonna create a nice div here. So in this div, we're just gonna say that you're missing WebGL. And that's just going to make it not visible on the screen. So if we run this, you won't actually see this unless WebGL is missing, which it isn't for us. Okay. Uh, if we want to force that, what we're going to do is we're just going to comment these two out. And if we run it now, you'll see that the GL is null, 
because we're not sending it to anything. So you'll see that we're saying missing WebGL, you can get it, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so super simple, and this will actually validate that we have WebGL. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna say else start. So we create a new method called start, and if GL is not equal to null, and if we do have a GL context, then we're gonna start the game. Super, super simple. And in this start method, what we're gonna do is we're actually just going to draw to the, the canvas element here. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna say gl.clearColor. We're just gonna set the color. Uh, each of these variables, these nums here, these are a double from zero to one, one representing a 255, which is the full hexadecimal spectrum of uh, colors. And then the alpha is just gonna be one because we want it to be completely opaque. So that's going to clear the color to black, and now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to clear the context to that color. So we're going to say clear, and then GL, because we got to reference this because this is a static variable, and then we're going to say color buffer bit right there. Okay, so that's it. When we run this, you'll see that we get a little black box right there. And that's WebGL. That's the basics of it right now. We're going to be getting a little more advanced later on. Uh, I'll add some codes and upload this to GitHub if anyone's confused, and you guys can go and check that out there. Thanks for this episode, and I will see you guys next time when we actually start drawing some objects to this.